Then I heard a pretty terrible sound, and then I looked down, and uh, you can see that chain right there looks like it's uh, sideways. Let's figure out what the problem is here. This whole bearing or stub shaft is broken off. This thing, instead of like this, needs to be like this. Looks like we're going back home, and we gotta take the header off, drop the feeder house, and uh, get a new stub shaft put on there or something. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. But uh, once we get it all torn apart, then we'll know for sure. All right, guys, so I think we figured out the problem with the combine, actually the feeder house right here. Let me just show you what the deal was. Okay, this is the piece right here. This is a stub shaft. Here's the other part of it. That was at one point one solid piece right there, but uh, you can see I actually ran it for quite a while uh, and then it finally gave way and snapped right off. So I think it's safe to say that's the piece that broke, right? And uh, I think it broke because the bearing went out. Yeah, there was no bearing in there. I mean, there's a, oh, wait a sec. Here's the outer race to the bearing. Well, look at that, we're lucky. There's one of the inner races of the bearing. Uh, so got a new bearing put in on this side along with a new stub shaft. John Deere had one for a fair price of $582,000. While we had the feeder house off, might as well put in a new bearing on this side, even though that one was okay. Put it on anyways. Then we got a new feeder house chain getting put on here because the old one actually twisted when the, you know, the stub shaft finally broke. Now I think it's actually ready for the combine to come forward and then we can get this feeder house put back on the combine. All right, so I actually got this feeder house chain put on here properly now. I had to add a half link right here, but that's all ready to go. So old chain right here, uh, it's useless, junk. Let's go ahead, throw her away. Stub shaft, old bearing, inner outer races, all junk, throw it away. All this stuff. It's so close. Well, we finally made it back out into the field. There's probably five acres left out in this field here. Then we finally got this 20 acre piece done. And then we'll head over to another field of about 50 acres. All right, let's get this thing fired up again. Turn on the separator. I don't hear any funny noises. That's good because uh, nothing should be broken on the separator part of the combine. It was just the feeder house. Stub shaft that snapped off, no full throttle. Do a little check on that. All right, let's turn on the head. I think we're back in business. Let's do it. Maybe Nazi, but we made it to the second field here. It's a lot more hilly out here, and the corn isn't near as tall. Like you could see, even down in the draw where I'm at, the corn is probably only six feet tall. And you get up on the hilltops, and it's like three, four feet tall. It's not going to yield as much out here, 
because of the hills. The good thing though is I can already tell by looking at it that this corn is nowhere near 30% moisture like that first field was. I mean, if I had a guess, it's probably 20% moisture. Or around there. We'll test it tomorrow when it's lighter out because you can't really see anything right now. So we'll just keep cutting and then, uh, yeah, I'll check back in tomorrow. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that's the sound of corn going over the edge. It's all spilling over the edge of the uh, grain tank. So let's uh, go unload this. guys we are back out here this morning so actually this afternoon so it kind of rained all morning and we haven't really grown that much corn to be honest we've kind of just been getting into it the past couple years so i'm not really totally sure if you can cut corn like right after it rains i don't know if it's too wet i mean certainly if it was like wheat or barley and it rained in the morning it would definitely be too wet to even harvest and we'd have to wait till it dried out but with corn i don't really know i think it might be i think it might be okay because you know it just takes in the cobs and we are running all of it through the dryer i'm not sure how the combine will you know react to it but uh i'm just gonna try it out right now and uh see what happens now this is odd i'm not sure why this uh top screen right here is definitely too closed for some reason it must have worked its way down closed for some reason but we're gonna open that back up a little on both sides actually let's see in all my years of growing corn you want to set your top screen about like that right there now maybe down oh that's perfect that's a money spot right there all right okay this side okay that ought to do it now i did come out here this morning when it was raining greased it all up checked the fluids and everything so we're good to go right now all right well i've been harvesting for for probably uh 30 minutes now and everything seems to Anyways, everything seems to be going fine. I don't think that rain really uh, hurt us at all. Now, the only problem I'm running into is uh, whatever you call it, the tank switch that tells you when the tank is full. That uh, switch, I think, is going bad because uh, I'm just going along and next thing I know, I hear corn spilling over onto the cap roof right there without the alarm going off. So uh, I think that switch is bad. We'll have to get a new one at some point. We're gonna go back to the truck and offload this.
that's a full truckload right there. I don't think we could fit one more kernel in there. So we are not going to. How about that? How about that? Yeah, look at that. Empty tank. You know what? So far, our uh, stub shaft is still in one piece. 